Hello, everyone. Just give us a few moments. We're going to give everyone another minute. We do have a lot of folks on the call today, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, Amy, do you think we've got enough folks to get started? I uh, just ran through. We've got six TOC members. We've got 23 on the call, and that's pretty much where we start anyway. So hooray. We can All right. Home. Let's go. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. As a reminder, your participation in these abides by the Linux Foundation's antitrust policy. And if you've made it, you're aware of the meeting logistics. Next slide. We have several TUC members present today on the call, but we are not making any decisions. Um, our agenda today is to discuss the Moving Levels Task Force that is being executed out of TAG Contributor Strategy. There have been a lot of comments on the issue, and we want to ensure that we have a good dialogue around kind of setting expectations as well as um, making sure that any volunteers that are interested in participating in this kind of understand what it is that they're getting into. We have attempted to define a uh, scope, but I know that there were a lot of questions on the issue. So let's go ahead and move forward. Um, so overall, a little bit of background around this is we've had a lot of um, feedback and comments from both projects and community members, as well as TOC members around the entirety of the moving levels process, the experiences that projects and community members have as a part of that, um, some of the challenges with the existing criteria, the existing leveling framework. Um, and we wanna ensure that we are using information um, based off of past experience to improve the process overall. So think of this activity as a retrospective where we're taking some of the information we've gathered both from maintainers, from TOC members, interactions with projects, moving levels, as well as community members that have moved projects themselves so that we can ensure that whatever changes are being made are actionable and relevant and serving the needs of the community and the projects as well as the TOC. So, and the goal of this group is to work with the data that's been collected both on the particular issue where we've had folks provide comments, um, as well as several other issues on the TOC repo regarding moving levels and the maintainer feedback survey regarding the experience overall, some of the challenges, areas that worked and what didn't work. Um, the intent at the end is to come up with a series of recommendations to adjust, change, and even restructure how the TOC determines technical maturity and viability within the CNCF for all lifecycle stages and um, for projects and their growth. And that, that 
last sentence becomes pretty important as we move forward. So we've attempted to define some of the areas that are in scope, such as defining levels of maturity within the life cycle, um, criteria and common characteristics, the distinguishing trait there being that not all criteria may apply to all projects. For instance, not every project is a specification. Um, so we might need to make determinations that are unique to specifications versus our more traditional um, thinking around projects. Um, we also need to do a better job of defining what archival archiving projects is, is a state of growth. Um, within that, there's also this concept of supplemental as a state of growth, and the TOC has seen this significantly more both in projects that are applying as well as um, projects that exist within the ecosystem and may have shifted slightly from when they were initially um, accepted into the CNCF. So they may not reach a high enough level of maturity where we would see widespread rampant adoption throughout the ecosystem and high maturity, but rather they perform a supplemental function to the overall ecosystem and we are not expecting them necessarily to meet that higher stage of growth. I know Liz had a question about this, um, but that was a little bit of the thinking around it. Um, restructuring the process and for each level in a state of evaluation that occurs at that level, um, defining who the stakeholders are and who's responsible for executing each portion of the process at each step, and defining what, if any, additional attributes should be recorded or captured to express the domain-specific maturity characteristics and evaluation by which those attributes could be expressed. Um, so there's a lot of information there. We tried to make sure that we were hitting on the key areas of scope that the TOC is looking for. Some of the specific areas that are out of scope are defining CNCF benefits to project at levels or states, um, as well as identifying any CNCF staff specific roles, functions, or activities as part of the moving levels process. And the reason why those two areas are defined as being out of scope, and I believe Craig or Doug had this as a question on the, on the issue, and I'll, I'll take a look at it and make sure we've addressed them all in a moment, um, is the TOC is responsible for the technical direction. So as part of our moving levels and process criteria, we are not necessarily in a position to dictate how the CNCF's resources are directed towards projects. That is a recommendation, I believe, and Amy, you'll have to correct me, um, to the governing board by which we can request additional resources of CNCF to be applied to projects at various states. So I'm, in my mind, I'm seeing the CNCF benefits and the staff specific support functions for whatever recommendations come out of this and what the TOC finalizes to be a recommendation to the governing board to allocate against. Um, that does not mean that this working group can, or, or I'm sorry, this does not mean that the working group should exclude recommendations in this area, but more importantly, that that's not the focus of this activity. But if there is something obvious, such as paying for or um, coordinating security audits for projects, for instance, it's an existing benefit um, and it's an existing criteria, we need to make sure that that's still accounted for within this process. Um, let me just double check some of the other questions and comments that we had on here. Um, there was a question around examining the purpose of the levels themselves. And I think that is definitely in scope. It's an area of discussion. If we don't understand what the purpose of the levels are and what they're trying to convey both to the community, to the projects, to potential adopters, um, we're not really going to be able to make effective change to the overall process. So definitely getting a definition on that. What is kind of the intent? What is the focus? Uh, what was another one? And I'll, I'll have to request folks, if you do have additional questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or TOC members, feel free to chime in as I toggle back and forth between the issue comments. And Amy, if you could help highlight folks with questions. All right, so Doug, Doug has done like a hand in, in, in the old fashioned way, so come on in. Yeah, I can't. For life me, I can't seem to find a little thing to say raise my hand in, in Zoom right now. It's really weird. It's anyway. Um, anyway, my my question was uh, uh, relative to the levels and stuff. Um, uh, let's just take an extreme example. Let's say this this task force is what it's called, I guess. Um, decides, you know what? We don't need levels. We want to do something slightly different. Um, is that within scope? 
I would say I'm going to incline on the yes side. And the reason why is my understanding of the original moving levels process was based off of the chasm. And that, that is a lot of what we talk about it from early adopters to, to some of the laggards from like a project maturity perspective. And our levels were defined based off of the chasm model. Um, but as we see CNCF projects come into the ecosystem, the chasm model assumes that projects have an end when they graduate. But what mm -hmm. we've seen as of late is that projects don't end. We expect them to continue to exist and sustain and evolve with the community, with industry, with whatever the needs of the organizations and adopters are and whatever brilliant ideas our community members come up with to create new projects. So for me, I see that there's a little bit of the existing technical maturity that we have in the current levels, but I also see a little bit more of an SCLC kind of overlay on top of that. So may, maybe we don't call it levels, maybe we call it something else, but the intent is that for me, that there are periodic points in which the TOC can engage with projects and the tags to understand their technical maturity, to understand their adoption, to ensure that they are set up for success as they reach more widespread and rampant adoption by community members and organizations within the ecosystem. Does that make sense? It does. The short answer is yes. It's within scope and that's that, that's all I cared about. So yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Other TOC members, do you have any comments, observations, and opinions on this? I think Duffy, you and I have talked about this in the past. Yeah. Yeah, I was, you know, I was thinking that given the demand that we have for things coming into the sandbox, that part of the part of the effort could be to understand the definition of what sandbox is a little bit better, right? To, to, to determine, like, is there a phase in moving levels wherein we um, we kind of change the way that sandbox works to include, to, to, um, to use that as a defining period for whether the relationship between in uh, a project coming into the CNCF and the um, and the CNCF itself can actually establish a, a reasonable relationship before actually committing to one another in that way, right? Like for the most part, right now we just let pe we um, we evaluate projects for inclusion, and then immediately they are a part of the the CNCF, and that means that our sandbox queue is growing pretty significantly and the number of projects that we include into sandbox continues to grow and so when um so when those projects are included into sandbox they they may not be incentivized necessarily to move out of sandbox from sandbox to incubation or from incubation to graduation because they've effectively accomplished their goal right it's a third part it's now under a third party entity other contributors can contribute to it a lot of the rewards or a lot of the value of being a part of the, the the CNCF is already achieved at the sandbox layer. So trying to understand the incentive for projects to continue to grow into that space is an, is an interesting one. Yep. Others? Okay. Looks like we have Doug Davis with a hand up. No, they already did it. Or do you do you actually see my hand up physically? I'm just curious because I tried and it couldn't make it no, happen I, on my side. <laughs> I don't. I just see a note for it. Sorry. Oh no, that okay. That's all. Thanks for mentioning me, though. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, one of the other uh, items that Liz called out in her comment on this particular issue was that the principles in the CNCF charter state fast is better than slow and the foundation enables projects to progress at high velocities to support aggressive adoption by users. And I want to ensure that while we're, while the task force is considering all of the data that's been collected and presented both in the existing TOC issues on our repo, as well as the comments on this particular issue and whatever community members suggest for recommendations, we want to meet, we want to ensure that whatever process comes out of this, whatever that architecture or leveling framework is or maturity model, that we're capable of adapting to the speed at which projects need in a way that considers any maturity requirements or needs within the domain that they operate. And what I mean by that is we have a lot of information available at our fingertips. And right now we are spending 
a significant amount of time, both in community members as well as within TOC members and even projects, providing a lot of information that exists in, a, in an API that exists in some other metadata that is informative both to adopters and TOC members in evaluating projects. So I would certainly love for this group to consider what information can be automatically collected and presented to show progress, to show growth, to show expansion and technical maturity and make recommendations both to the TUC as well as the CNCF about how we can ensure that that information is more up to date instead of one or two years old and then requesting projects come back in and update their PRs. Like we would like to be able to do this as quickly and efficiently as possible while still considering we have to plan for not only 200 or maybe even 300 projects coming into the CNCF within the next few years, but also that we could see significantly more. So this process has to work for everything and a lot more of them with the current constraints and resource limitations that we have as community members and volunteers. What other questions, comments do folks have? Okay, Amy, next slide. So here's some of the timelines that we're considering. So the TOC did provide um, some scoping and we're providing additional clarification here. Um, we would like anybody that is interested in participating in this group to comment on the issue. I know we've seen several folks that have expressed interest and have recommendations. They've already provided comments. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at kicking this off on the week of August 21st. Um, we will have two TOC members that will be a part of this group to ensure that the rest of the TOC is informed of like what's going on. Um, as well as ensure that any considerations that the TOC has as far as moving levels are, are suggested as community level uh, community member input to this group. Um, and that way we have better lines of communication and we're not surprised by anything that comes out of it. I'm excited to see this work happen. Um, I know Duffy had expressed an interest in being one of the TOC members to participate in this. Are there other TOC members on the call that are also equally interested? Matt? Um, I just had a brief question. Um, is, is, as far as projects in the sandbox, uh, is, there, is it a goal to have some measure of how they're collaborating with each other? Uh, are they merging? Uh, are there any indicators of sort of, I, I remember a few years ago talking about the intent of the sandbox um, in, in the discussion you were referencing before with Liz and whatnot, um, that that was kind of called out as an ancillary goal. I don't remember if I read it or if I heard it, but is that still sort of a sandbox goal that it's easy to enter the sandbox and then you bump into other projects and you might merge with them? Like, is that something that we want to incentivize as a foundation or is that the foundation rather wants to incentivize or is that not a goal? Um, I'm going to say that's entirely up to the projects. Although the TOC does recommend and encourage projects to partner and work together to see where they can optimize for integrations. Um, but we don't necessarily dictate one project should interact with or merge with another project. We would like to see that where it makes sense and it's reasonable, but it, that's not true in all cases. Josh? Um, yeah, I'm looking at this timeline and if discussing whether or not we should even have the levels that we have is in scope, I can't imagine that the committee is going to deliver concrete recommendations within eight weeks. I mean, I mean that that debate by itself could go on for quite some time. That's certainly understandable. I think part of it is while the while we can talk a long time around what, what does or does not work in some of the recommendations. I want to ensure that we're, we're time bounding this so that we have recommendations that come out of this group. Um, I don't want us to continue to stare at the problem 
we've been doing that for a long period of time. We haven't, we haven't actually moved forward on it. So I want to make sure that we have an end goal and in, insight. The other item that I will say is I want to ensure that we are focused on iterative improvements. So the deliverables or the outcomes and the recommendations of this group can certainly be long-term vision. And like, this is where we would like to see everything moving forward. But ultimately we need to have smaller steps to be able to get there. That way we can try something out so we can adjust it and then we can make additional changes on top of that. So I wanna be able to be as flexible as possible and agile with this process. So it sounds like, Josh, from your recommendation, eight weeks is definitely not enough. Um, we could probably push this out. Um, ideally, we were kind of targeting around uh, KubeCon to talk through a little bit more solidly around some of the recommendations, yeah. but I certainly understand that that may not be possible well, since this is... Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, ultimately, if, if the committee was scoped to recommending improvements in the levels that's certainly something that we could do in in eight weeks um, okay the um it's just that if there's concurrently a debate going on about whether or not we should have the levels at all that's going to prevent any discussion of specific improvements okay um do you think it would be reasonable to have an initial focus of this group on immediate improvements and then a more long-term revisit of the levels overall? Yeah, I mean cuz the the levels overall that's going to be a long discussion, right? We've had them okay. since the CNCF was created, they've been tweaked a number of times. Yep. Um people can be discussion the projects that have gone through getting to graduated are now very invested in the system most of them. Um so I, you know, I see that taking a long time to resolve. It's almost like we would want to have a separate committee um, to debate that, you know, to discuss that particular topic while somebody else just works on incremental improvements. Okay. Uh, Doug and then Matt. Yeah. So I don't want to say have a problem with pushing up the date, but then on the flip side, I do tend to like forcing functions. And so having a sooner date with the assumption that, if something happens, we can't make that date, then we can move it out if needed. Um, but I like the idea of having something rather sooner because otherwise people get busy with their real day jobs and then things get pushed out. Think, you know, what, what's the, there's an expression about things fill the time as needed or fill the void, you know, kind of stuff. Um, so I like the idea of a forcing function with the assumption that if it if worse comes to worse, we need more time, then the TOC will allow more time if needed. But either way is technically fine with me. Matt? Yeah, I, I like the idea of a forcing function. Um, revisiting the levels uh, is probably, I mean, that, that's a highly contentious and political thing. You've got graduated projects, you've got companies, you've got projects and they wanna, you know, there's just so much to that and so many angles and you open that up and the people who are dealing with it are gonna have people coming out of the woodwork to try to influence it. Um, it's going to be much more contentious and debated and it doesn't solve our short-term problems, right? Our short-term problems is how do we manage the current set of projects that we have? And I think I, I like the idea of breaking it up into two things. One, deal with the big hairy one later, um, but deal with the short-term things we've got to get done to communicate more clearly and expectations and how do you do things within the current structure. And I think that will even help, you know, create learnings that can feed back into whatever future things we do, right? Sometimes dealing with the situation in front of us, we can learn a lot to help influence the bigger restructure later, because I think there's a lot we just don't know and don't realize. So I like focusing on just practical things to help things moving and move that big, hairy um, color of the bike shed conversation off and, and just focus on real world stuff. And if you focus on things that will impact um, you know, things given the current levels, I, I like the idea of having it time boxed as well. That kind of forces people to focus on it. It, it, it has a realistic output because we're gonna have a probably a TOC presentation at KubeCon, right? This is one of those things that hopefully we'll have an output from, we can talk about at KubeCon. These ideas then can be run across people in person, 
right? We can talk about it there with people and um, that can influence maybe things. Maybe we'll get feedback there. And then at the next TOC meeting, we'll be able to talk about some of that feedback. But I think it, it feeds us for those in-person meetings, which I think is good too. So I like the idea of having time box, even though I see it as really scary, given the fact that I'd like to be involved, but I also don't think I have the time to be involved, but I'd like to be involved. Um, I think you and many community members share that concern and interest. <laughs> Kathy? Yeah. I think you just volunteered. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Kathy, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I share the same viewpoint as Matt. I think, you know, Matt summarized it very well. I think we should, we can have some short term, you know, focused uh, goals and delivery. And then for the long term thing, I think that may need a lot of, you know, they, they will involve a lot of debate. And also we can learn, as Matt mentioned, I think, you know, from this clarification process, um, I think we can learn something. Yeah, and then for the long-term discussion. All right. So what we will do is we will modify the scope on the issue. We'll also reference this recording so that if folks do have questions around why the modification um, or feel like they didn't understand some of the the comments that were being made, we'll have the responses here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll modify it. We'll focus this timeline on initial iterative improvements and then um, with the expectation that there will be a follow on activity once those improvements have been applied to actually reconsider um, the leveling framework that we currently have in place, probably starting next year sometime. Does, how does that sound for folks? I, I don't want to lose the momentum on this. So I don't want it to be this time next year when we're having the same conversation about moving levels. So perhaps around um, early spring, mid late spring, depending. See a plus one. Um, Kapil had a good comment and chat about considering the the projects that are currently going through the process today and the ecosystem knowledge that they've possessed as a result of that um, definitely needs to be considered for sure. One of the items, I don't believe it's clear on the issue, but I, I think I've mentioned to many folks that have reached out to me is that we do need to consider the projects that are currently in the process for moving levels, as well as the ones that have already applied but are not assigned to a TUC sponsor to start the due diligence. Um, so whatever recommendations come out of this group, I'd like to see some versioning or migration for anybody that's currently in flight, um, whether or not that's volunteer based that they wanna try the new process um, or purposefully be excluded from it because they've already started. Those should all be considerations as well. Yeah, I think that I think there is a good great point. So for the current um projects that are already in the like in the process of moving in the process um for moving levels, how should we treat those projects? I mean, mm -hmm. as this change come in. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on scope or timelines or focus? I, 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 I think, you know, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I think my question, yeah, is, oh, are we going to have a, like, um, what were those uh, current projects just follow the existing criteria, even there some, there's some, um, sometimes they are not very clear or should we evaluate it against a new criteria? I think that's part of the recommendations to come out of the group is to, oh, okay. to provide that. Yep. I don't want to make that decision here because we do have a lot of projects that are uh, in the middle of moving levels and throwing in new graduation criteria right now seems a little inappropriate to them, particularly if we're about ready to open them up for public comment. Yeah. Yeah. But so if those projects are impacted, we need to let them know. Otherwise, yep. people... I don't you think you know it take long, you know, time, you know, all those changes or disruption. Yep. 
So let's see what the recommendations from the group are. Some of those improvements may be adjustments to criteria. I do know that TAG Contributor Strategy has an open request for having governance reviews for graduated projects. Um, and I do know that there's been some other discussions in the past about modifying some of the criteria at various levels. Um, there was a question about whether or not we had a lead yet for this. Amy, did we decide whether or not that was a voting function or a self-organizing function? We didn't, um, but basically like, uh, I'll go back to the timelines here. Like uh, the intention, at least right now, is that I'm the one that's going to be able to like schedule the meetings, get us to a mm -hmm. place where we actually have recommendations to be able to give to everyone. If, if someone volunteers to be able to lead, I'm happy to be able to partner with them. But realistically, I am kind of your, your non-voting kind of like shepherd that kind of moves everything across the line. Um, but uh, I'm also going to highlight uh, a, a new staffer with us, um, George Castro, who I'm bringing in to be able to help me out on this one and George wave to the crowd um the reason that I want George involved because George has actually been with a project to be able to move between levels and he's now a staff member as well so I can task him with things thank you awesome all right so, I'll give him a chance to be able to say anything here I know it's just decloaked and come off camera <laughs> he might be like hardware muted All right, game on. Basically, like that's that's exactly where like I want to be able to like have at least a few of us kind of like paying attention in here to be able to make sure that we do actually get this crossed line and, and have like reasonable recommendations to be able to bring to the TOC. So, okay. Um, so for TOC members right now, I know that Duffy is definitely interested. Matt is also interested, but might be time constrained. Um, I know that I am also interested, but will also be time constrained. So at the very least, you've got one TOC member available and you've got, at least between Matt and I, we can probably make up that second one. Anyone else? Yep, if interested, but time constrained is like a qualification for joining this conversation, I'm happy to be there too. But like, I have no idea how to rank the three of us on who, who's the most and or least time constrained and which ones of us make up that second one. Yeah. We, we can certainly figure that out amongst ourselves. Yeah, I, I'm really, um, yes, I know it's time consuming. I may not be able to draw all the meetings, but I can draw some. Maybe we can take turns, you know. For that. The intention is to be able to not have this be a meeting heavy focus, like just, just saying between, between time zones and all of that. And I love all of you, but we really want to be able to actually have work happen more in writing and less in like meetings, so. Yep, okay. All right, so what we're gonna do for the kickoff that's gonna get started, Amy, if you could put together the meeting, um, I can certainly go in and update the issue with the scoping information um, to talk around the initial iterative improvements and then with the longer term um, expected to happen in early, early to mid spring of next year. And then um, we can go from there. Am I missing anything? No, I mean, we'll try to be able to do a kickoff meeting, but again, it'll, the like, real focus is going to be towards, like, documentation and being able to, like, write things down, so. Yep. Um. Okay. Any other questions for today? All right. Well, if that's everything, thank you all so much for joining right. us on today. Kapil? Uh, yeah, sorry, I dropped it in the chat, but um, I must, was must looking at that foundation uh, issue uh, on the impact of HashiCorp's license change and was just curious if there was any timeline on a talk statement or guidance there to the project. Not a talk statement, but there's, I just dropped a link in the chat. Um, we have source available recommendations that have been published over in foundation. So Thank you. Yeah. Like, like, not necessarily talk issue right now, kind of looking at this more like broader foundation pieces. Happy to be able to take questions um, and on that particular issue, which I will go find and drop into chat as well. Um, the, uh, uh, if you do have um, pieces that you know that you're using in your project, we would love to be able to know about them. Kind of just looking for data right now about like where and what might be impacted. And um, hi, I'm Adam. I'm the HashiCorp representative to the CNCF. Um, so happy to answer questions for any of the TSC members. 
um, provide assistance in understanding uh, what the change means uh, for registered projects, being engaged with a few people already and um, actively tracking uh, issues 617. So happy to help if I can. Focus right what now is, is being able to gather data, really. Just like, come come help me help understand oh. all of these pieces coming together. Capo, back to you. I, I've, I've dropped uh, some of my, uh, our, our project's uh, data into that issue. I, I'm more just curious, like, do we have any guidelines from a foundation level, like, before using it? And I don't know if that's the appropriate form, to be fair. Um, like, we're using it for functional tests. We, we have some uses of, of libraries. The libraries are still in PL, uh, thankfully. Um, but I'm just... Uh, Curious where where we should be drawing where the lines are, so to speak. And I'll go read that document that you just posted. Thank you. Yeah, start with that document. Come back with questions. Um, we might not have very many answers right now, but we at least have some things that we're starting from. So, yeah. You, you know, it, it may be useful to know. Uh, just for general, the CNCF projects. Um, they've got to be under the Apache 2 license, and there are only a lot certain licenses that are generally allowed, and the others have exceptions. And there is already a policy around that. You can find details on that in the foundation repo um, alongside the source available recommendation. So when it comes to your dependency tree and what's in there, there are already certain things that we do generally need to follow. Um, and knowing that whole picture and the process around it may also give some useful insight if you're not already familiar with it. And Josh, I'd ask you if you're not a lawyer to refrain from making commentary about this. That's an opinion. It is an opinion. Yes. As a TSC member, you came, you, uh, you, your opinion carries I'm not a please. TSC member. Okay. So for folks that have more questions about the licensing change that we've been talking about, there is an open issue on the foundation repo that was linked. It's number 617. Please go and provide any comments or additional insights there, um, as well as please review the file that Amy graciously linked within chat regarding some of these changes. OK. Thank you everyone for your time today on the call. As we learn more, um, we'll be providing updates both on that issue regarding licensing and as we move forward with the moving levels process, um, be sure to check out that issue on the Tech Contributor Strategy Repository. I expect to see some changes coming out shortly today. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.